Bloop a doop a doo. Bloop a doop a da ba Hey friends, Michael here, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the recent cover that I put on the channel last week of the moon theme from DuckTales, because there's some pretty cool stuff happening in the original theme, and I wanted to use this as an opportunity to put my music theory professor hat on again and teach you something. This time, I'm going to teach you about common tone modulations. So let's start by looking at the moon theme. All right, so this is the DuckTales moon theme. There's something that you might notice that's a little bit different about this time signature. Basically what's going on here is that it's a regular 4-4 with one 16th note missing. That's just for this intro. Once the actual meat of the melody, I would say where the A section starts, it switches to 4-4. Another note on that, I wasn't sure which of the four beats or which of the four collections of four 16th notes was the one that I would decide is the one that it was missing a 16th note. Based on the melody and the bass line, it seems to be in different spots and different measures, but just for my sanity and ease, I decided that each time it was the last beat that was missing a 16th note. That might not be how Sakaguchi wrote it, but that's what I decided. The thing that I wanted to point out in this that I thought was really cool was how it changes keys. So first off, what key are we starting in? We are in F sharp major, not the friendliest key. What key do we modulate to? We modulate to A major. Now that's sort of a big and shocking sounding shift in most cases. Why is that? Um, let's go into that. Okay, so when we are in any key, let's use F sharp since that's the key that we're working in. We have closely related keys that are the easiest to modulate to. The way to figure out what the closely related keys are is to figure out what the chords are in the key that do not use any accidentals. So the one chord in F sharp is our home base. Seven is not an option because that's a diminished chord. So what are all of those chords? We've got G sharp minor, A sharp minor, B major, C sharp major, D sharp minor. And so this chord is E sharp diminished. You can't have a diminished key, really, so that's not an option. So these are our closely related keys. If you remember, I said that we modulate to A major, not A sharp minor. So that's sort of an odd choice. It sounds a little more jarring. Why is that? Because the key signature of A sharp minor is the same thing as C sharp major. So that's seven sharps, F, C, G, D, A, E, B. The key signature of A major is three sharps, F, C, G. Having that much of a change is a little jarring. How does this work though? So let's add another line to this to talk about how many sharps and flats are in each key. In F sharp, there are six sharps. In G sharp minor, there are five sharps. In A sharp minor, there are seven sharps. In B major, there are five sharps. In C sharp major, there are seven sharps. And in D sharp minor, there are six sharps. So then if you'll note, we start at six and the closely related keys either add one sharp, so seven sharps, or take away one sharp to five sharps, or they have the same number of sharps, six. When we do this trick of a common tone modulation, it's usually more accidentals that change than that. So let's go back to that. The common tone that we use to modulate between these two key centers is F sharp. F sharp is in the melody, this middle line is the melody, and this F sharp in the melody ends the first section, the F sharp major section of the piece. That is also the first pitch of the A major section. This F sharp is used as a pivot. It's sort of a bridge between both keys because F sharp exists in both keys. So we have F sharp in the first context, which is the tonic or do of our home key. And then we recontextualize it as the sixth scale degree or la in A major. So this is one of my favorite modulation tricks that occur in music. And I wanna show you my favorite example of that. This is the Lied Waldesgespräch from Schumann's Liederkreis Opus 39. It's one of my favorite song cycles, and it is one of my favorite songs in that cycle. There are two characters who are singing in this. This sung by the same singer. If you're interested in checking this out, I suggest pausing here opening a new tab and listening to a recording of this. I've got one of my favorites linked in the description, but we've got this very solid E major sounding thing happening here. It's very obviously in this key because this bass line is just going do, sol, do, sol throughout. The male character, a hunter, is in the forest and 
comes across a beautiful young woman, Shuna Braut. He asks her, you know, it's dangerous here. Why are you here alone? Let me lead you home. I'm not going to be singing this in the correct key, but we have in his vocal line here, Du schöne Braut ich für dich heim. I'm going to show just that much. This is a very solid sounding cadence in E major. Sol, do, sol, mi, mi, re, do, re, do. But this is recontextualized in C major. The piano part also very significantly changes. It's much smoother and more gentle. The singer singing as the female character then speaks saying the world is a scary place and uh, my heart is broken there are hunting horns echoing through the forest you should run away you don't know who i am now it's much easier to get back to the home key in any kind of modulation because our ear sort of wants to go back there so schumann just has the bass of the piano walk down fa mi re do in the home key so we're there so he sings again saying that this horse that this woman is on and the woman herself oh they're so beautiful they're reich geschmückt so they're bedecked they're like wearing jewels both of them she's beautiful now i know who you are God be with me. You are the witch Lorelei. So in German myth and folklore, Lorelei is like a siren. She lures men to their death, basically. Then the piano part plays what it did originally when it modulated to her. So we know it's her singing now, but she stays in his key. So she's not softening herself quite as much anymore. So she says, Du kennst mich wohl, you know exactly who I am. From Tom Stein schaut still mein Schloss tief in den Rhein. Uh, from up there, there's my castle. She repeats his words back at him. Es ist schon spät, es ist schon kalt. So that's what he opened saying to her. It's it's getting late, it's getting cold. It's already late, it's already cold. So she ends with, Kommst nimmermehr aus diesem Wald. You will never again leave this forest. So she curses him to stay in the forest. And at the very end, the hunting horns trail off, suggesting that its hunting buddies have left him behind. So in Waldesgespräch, this key change is intentionally a little abrupt in drawing. It's a definite, obvious key change when you're listening to this section, but it's smoothed out slightly by this use of a common tone. So in the case of this piece, E, the pitch E, is the common tone that we use to modulate. Let's go back to the other one. Okay, so moon theme. The thing that you can do to notate that there is a key change happening is basically the same as one of the methods to show a pivot chord when you're using that type of modulation. If we were marking this score up, we would start by noting that this is an F sharp major. We could go through and do a chordal analysis, but I don't really feel like going through the specific chords in this. But when we get to the modulation, we can show instead what the pitches are. So here, that's one. That is tonic in this key. And here, when we get to A major, the new key, this is six. But like I said, we want to show how that pitch changed, you know, how its role changed. So what we do is we put that it was one, and then we draw some lines. So here we put this little squiggly line, and if I were drawing this by hand, it would be much easier to show. But this shows that the F sharp major home key is stopping here and instead we are recontextualizing one as six or do as la So in this case, we are modulating up a minor third, our home key F sharp major. We modulate up to A. In my cover of the song, I did this. This is exactly what the original recording does. I did this exactly the same way. There's not too many changes that I made. But then I thought, you know, let's play with it a little, a little more. Let's use this same melody and bass line and harmonize it using, you know, roughly the same chords even, but just have it feel different. So what I did is I decided to modulate again. And I was playing around on my keyboard to decide what key I wanted to modulate to. And I decided that I wanted to modulate to C. Now, since I used the same modulation from the first half of the piece to the second, I needed to modulate up a minor third again. So at the end, we end in E flat major. But then I noticed that I sort of accidentally made this very symmetric in its key centers. F sharp, up a minor third to A. A, up a minor third to C. C, up a minor third to E flat. And if I wanted to go one further, I would go E flat, up a minor third to G flat, or 
F sharp. So we come full circle in this. And that was an accident, but I'm glad it worked out that way. And I wanted to highlight the difference in the new key, in the second half of the key areas in the C and E flat by having a different feel in the percussion, in the drum parts. And I hope I gave you a little bit of an idea of how this common tone modulation works. Again, it's a way to make distantly related keys or more distant than we are used to. It's a way to bridge the gap between two keys that are not closely related. And you do that by finding a pitch that exists in both keys and highlighting that pitch. Often in classical music, it's done by a repeated pitch high in the register or low in the register. So it's sticking out from what's on either side of it. You just repeat that pitch as the key changes underneath it. So that pitch can stay to highlight that pitch is the way that we used this modulation. So again, this is a technique that's used when it's intentionally a little jarring, but you want to have some connection still. It's not a completely wild out of nowhere modulation. Okay, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something or at least learned that there is something cool out there that you can do with music. I feel like I'm a little rusty in my uh, teacher, Michael strategies. So let me know if you found any other common tone modulations in any music because I love hearing these things. So put any examples that you find down below or please feel free to ask me any questions because I'm sure I wasn't super straightforward and clear with all this stuff and I'd love to help you learn some stuff if I can. Please give this video a like if you liked it. Please give it a pity like if you didn't like it. To this side over here there's a video that YouTube thinks you might like so check that out. Up there in the corner is the button to subscribe to our channel. We don't normally do music theory Theory class like this. This is sort of an aside that I do occasionally. We normally talk about music and video games typically. Sometimes we talk a little bit about movies and TV shows too. So that's it for this one. Thanks for joining me. Maintain your groovy selves.